And now, from beyond our dimension, this is the Jeff Mara Podcast. Here's Jeff. My guest is Sonia Rinaldi, researcher and prolific author in the area of instrumental transcommunication. She has advanced this research over the past nearly 40 years of dedicated time and effort, often using guided intuition to help those on the other side advance to contact us and share information. Sonia, thank you for joining me and welcome. Thank you, Jeff, for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, we are excited to have you and I think we should start with this. What exactly is instrumental transcommunication? Instrumental transcommunication is how we call the communication between our uh, plane of life, our physical side and other sides, maybe dimensions or other worlds, as you wanted to, 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 to call, through electronic devices. That means that no mediumship is evolved, nothing. It is just a, um, a technical communication between the other side and our devices. All right. How did you get into this stuff? Well, um, I think that uh, I'm a very rational type, so uh, since young. Uh, so uh, I was doubting that what I learned in my high school, uh, that was a... Um, a nun's college, I, I, I wasn't sure that we didn't live uh, forever or what was the reason of life and uh, that we would go either to a heaven or to hell and uh, nothing that was all. So it doesn't make any sense for me. And by this time, it was the year's 80s, um, I heard that people some researchers in Europe were recording voices uh, of loved ones that has passed. And then I thought, well, if this is true, this will solve, this will clarify my doubts because that will mean that life goes on. So I started myself uh, recording, but there was no instructions, nothing. I had to create, to invent the will because there was no no information about how to get it. So I started from the very zero and uh, came to the point that we are now, uh, recording voices and images. I didn't mention this in the beginning, but Sonia is in Sao Paulo, Brazil, and now we are joined by Lisa Lanuski, one of her assistants, to help us with this interview. So Lisa, welcome. Thank you, Jeff. And thank you for joining us. So it sounds like to me, Sonia, that you had to create your own instrument to talk with beings on the other side. Is that correct? Let's say that the way that I record, yes, it is, they are my creations, uh, but not the devices. Devices are the, the usual ones like a cell phone, um, computer, basically, today. Um, but obviously, these are the devices that I use to record. Um, but the way that I record sometimes with uh, um, with the cloths or paper or is, uh, is steam, all this is really my my inventions. Sorry. As I, sorry. As I, I notice, for instance, that something is going well, I get that and go ahead. For instance, uh, some time ago, casually, I discovered that uh, the vapor could be interesting for the other side to shape and to, to send images. So that was a casualty. So I, I noticed that it worked. So I went on uh, performing many tests with vapor so that uh, they could test from the other side to ours and uh, see how we could get better, better together. All right, so that sounds like to me you're recording these beings in two ways, one with audio and, and one visually by using water vapor, or I guess you're using something to create steam, and then images will be present within the steam? Yes, uh, that's it. And uh, these are two different uh, um, uh, experiment, experiments. Uh, either I record voice or I record image. 
um, it wasn't possible yet for the other side to show and speak simultaneously. We hope that one day we reach that, but not yet. So yes, uh, when I record um, four images, I use mainly vapor and lights, mm. uh, all sorts of lights, because that is what, what the other side, the scientists from the other side will uh, modulate, will shape and uh, bring, uh, insert back into my devices. That's amazing. So when you're using audio to communicate with them, are you using some sort of white noise generator? No, uh, these uh, are not good for the other side to work. Um, because for instance, the white noise has much more frequencies than the other side needs. Because all they need to be a clear voice is just human uh, spectrum, human frequencies. So all the rest of the frequencies will come inside the, the recording as uh, something dirty, uh, as noisy. So uh, the better is to use human voice exactly um, uh, between these parameters uh, of the frequencies and uh, for avoiding that uh, we could make a confusion between what is being said and the background sound then I, that was something like my creation, is to break a human voice. So a syllable by syllable, so that it makes oh, um, something that you cannot understand. Like a gibberish. Uh, yeah. And uh, uh, so I use that. And that will be manipulated into their replies. Before you start recording them, are you meditating or doing anything to get in contact with these beings first? No, I think that after 40 years, I think that the, the connection is permanent. I think that, uh, for instance, I'm sure that they are listening to us right now. Uh, I think that they have to, 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 to keep me on their focus so that uh, uh, because th there is a difference of time uh, from the astral city where they are and uh, our Earth. So they have to make adjustments uh, all the time, all the time. Uh, so. Uh, yes, I think that they they can follow anything that I'm doing here or to whom I'm talking, anything. That's fascinating that you say that because many people say on the other side, there is no time. No, that is not exactly like that. There is a, a very interesting uh, theory um, by Einstein. Um, it is named the uh, Block Universe Theory, which says that uh, uh, the universe may be a just a hole and uh, set it already since the Big Bang to the future. Not uh, let's say let's say that we can be in the middle, but we still have some time for the future ahead. Uh, but uh, it happens that uh, uh, today also we're writing about this. It happens that this is a very materialistic vision of the universe because we are counting with just the the physical side and the linear what, time. Uh, yeah. Well, what about the consciousness? Where is it? So uh, I think that besides this thing that is flowing, uh, possibly uh, the future is not uh, uh, decided yet. So that is to, uh, up to us. To, we have the free uh, arbitrum to choose our right things or wrong things uh, to make our choices so that our destiny is adjusting all the time and we are creating the future. And uh, this implies in some extra element, which is not just the physical, it is the consciousness. So, uh, yeah, the, I think that the vision that uh, time time doesn't exist uh, uh, per physics, that's not correct. Mm -hmm. it, there is something, uh, time is defined as something that uh, comes one after the other. And that is what we see. We see things coming one after the other. So time, yes, it is coming and uh, it is being built possibly as a huge consciousness, which may be called God or whatever. Um, but I, I think that, yes, there, there is time, in my opinion. But, but linear time, as we have defined it here, days and weeks and months, that doesn't exist, correct? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, sure. Hmm. 
You also mentioned an astral city. Some people say that on the other side, there's a crystal city. Would that be the same thing? Um, maybe. Um, I, this, uh, uh, this word, uh, this name, astral city, is very used in spiritualistic uh, doctrine. Um, so I prefer to use it. And as per I, as I, I imagine, there are lots, lots, lots of uh, astral cities surrounding Earth. Uh, and uh, we will go to one or other in accordance to our wishes, to our actions, to our being. Uh, you make synchrony to that city or that, the other one or this or that. So there, there are uh, many, many all around the earth. That's amazing that you said that because recently I had another guest talk about the different astral cities and... I think the guest implied that depending on where you live, you may end up in that certain city. Oh, yeah. It, 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 there is a connection. Yes. For instance, uh, possibly, as per the spiritist lit literature, uh, there are astral cities over Brazil, for instance, others over uh, Arabia and so on. So that obviously, when we die, we go to those ones that are close, not on only for our as our being itself, but also as our um, our language. Otherwise, you arrive in the other side and you will not know what is going on. So, uh, yes, uh, uh, there are lots of cities uh, over the countries. Yes. Do you have guides that help you with this research? Look, I don't like to call them guides because I think that uh, we work as, uh, let's say, a, as a huge project of communication that is ongoing uh, from the other side to our side. Um, it is something like NASA. Uh, they are every time uh, developing and a lot of people work together. Um, I work here with some volunteers as Lisa, for instance, and other people that helps me in this side, but in the other side is where the things work and uh, where there is the transmission station uh, which is in connection with this. Possibly there are lots of tr uh, transmission stations as well, but obviously there is there is one specifically that is uh, developing with me and testing and seeing how we can move on and get better, the images and so on. Can you tell us more about the transmission stations? Well, I, I think that I, I have never uh, consciously been there. Uh, but uh, I have some friends that did. That was a very interesting experience because uh, when we talk about um, the recording with the consciousness, it doesn't mean only deceased ones. You may uh, also, uh, through devices, mm -hmm. you can, can get in touch with the higher levels as also as animals, which is, let's say, lower levels. And um, you can also... Uh, uh, be in contact with the other species, uh, but because all this is through devices, they don't de depend on a human mind, right? And uh, so I think that um, uh, obviously, um, uh, no, let me tell you first the, the, about the, the transmission station. I, I think it is something very, very huge with lots of equipment that they develop it so to reach us and possibly they have 100 physicists and uh, engineers and all these types of making maths to reach us in the just point that they can um, uh, transmit, they can uh, transfer some data file because that is what we receive. These are data file that comes from the other side inside of the computer. You've really piqued our interest right now. Do you have some recordings that you can play for us to show some examples? Yes, um, I, I can share my screen okay. and uh, and I can show you. When I record for someone, uh, Lisa usually intermediates for me for making things quicker. So she gets in touch with the mothers. Usually I record for mothers that lost their kids, usually, but obviously for other losses as well. Uh, so, I'll show you some cases. Uh, for instance, this is a Christian's case. And all I ask 
um, all I need is one photo because these will serve as a reference for the other side. One photo, um, the most recent that the mother has uh, before the kid passed. So this at left is uh, the photo that uh, uh, Christian's mom sent it to me. Okay, now what I'll do, I'll make the vapor uh, flowing and the photo and the other side will be simultaneously uh, inserting uh, in my cell phone, usually I use a cell phone to record, and they will be inserting in images from Christian's consciousness. What means that uh, not only he will appear as he is now, which is more similar to the photo, but mainly uh, what's more, let's say, surprising is that the other side is capable to extract from Christian's memories, from Christian's consciousness, uh, they will get those images and send it to us. So you see here at the right, as Christian appears already younger, because it is from his memory, from his consciousness. Okay. Uh, here, I'm sorry, I, I had other pictures of uh, Christian. This is Christian at left as he appeared to me and as I sent it to his mother. And then later, the mother sent photos for comparing. And then you see that the traces are precisely the same. So this is an image extracted, extracted from Christian's consciousness, from his memory. Here we have another case of a couple. And what was interesting in this case was uh, that uh, both uh, uh, passed uh, uh, 20 years apart. Um, the lady 30. Uh, passed 20 years before her husband, but they are together now. And that is what the trans images show it. So let's see. Here you have one apparition of uh, uh, the, the uh, Mr. Honorio, much younger and recomposed because that is what the images show, that in the other side, you uh, get younger, you appear better than you were when you passed it, mm -hmm. right? This is, in truth, um, uh, just uh, uh, something that added the same thing that the literature uh, the spiritist literature says here you have how rosa appeared not using glasses anymore and uh, a better smile and uh, recomposed she passed of cancer but now this is how she looks like that is younger and well here another Im image and you have to note that these images that I receive, the family doesn't have. Uh, they have to look for something similar into the albums uh, of a family, but they don't have it. And here uh, are uh, the grandparents of the lady that asked me to, to record with Rosa and Honorio, and both uh, appeared together indicating that in the other side they join the the, kimpli, the families uh, keep together. This is uh, Jonathan's case. He passed of cancer because that time I was making uh, uh, only for mothers who uh, lost kids for cancer. So uh, sometimes I, I change for other types of uh, loved ones. And this was for, for cancer as well. Uh, he passed at the age of 30. And uh, this is how he appeared at left in my images. And here is a photo that mother sent for comparison. Another one. And this is uh, Thompson, Thompson's case. He passed also of cancer. It is just a coincidence. I just selected all of block of cases. Um, but we, obviously we have... Uh, including within uh, babies that were unborn babies. Uh, we have all sorts of uh, um, tests done. 
So this is Thompson's case. He uh, passed at the age of, of 24. And look at the quality of this image. This is how the other side can transmit it to us, to our devices. So I suppose that is very clear. And here is um, a, an image extracted from his memory. And this is the photo that mother sent for comparison. Much later. A children, yes. So, yeah, no, that's uh, what I was... Uh... Do you have any video of the water vapor in real time showing the images so we can see it like that? Yes, I do. But you have to wait a second because I have to look, because I didn't prepare these. Uh, it is not opened, okay? I have to... Oh, okay. Yeah. While you're looking, let me ask this. So... Are the people that are on the other side choosing these images themselves that they're giving you, or is somebody else contacting them and getting those images and sending them to you? Because you're kind of saying they're extracting it from their consciousness or something, and I'm not really understanding what's going on on the other side. It's my understanding. I don't believe that they are, you know, standing there and that things are being extracted that way. Um, I think that it's just that it's out there. It's in the Akashic records. It's everything, everything that's ever happened, everything that's going to happen. It's all there. Um, and I think that the images that are, that do come through are, are selected because they're so evidential because the family doesn't have anything just like it, but boy, do they have something that that's close enough you know, that we can say, wow, you, I mean, you couldn't have gotten that anywhere. That's, I've never seen that image, but I know who that is. I know that that's my son or my husband or my whatever. And let me look and see if I could get something close enough to, to show. So I think it's all for the, for evidence. All right. At so, least that's my understanding. All right. So on the other side, let's see these people that have passed over. They're over there in the cities doing whatever but all this information about them is stored in the records. So the people at the transmission stations are just gathering the information out of the records. They're not really having like the some... the people aren't there. Yeah, the people aren't, you know, the people, yeah, the people aren't there having some sort of communication. They're just grabbing the information and sharing it with Sonia to let you know that we've established some sort of contact between the two realms. It's my understanding that they're not... You know, they're not summoning someone to the transmission station and putting them in front of a camera and saying, you know, put something out there for us. I don't yeah. believe that that's it. Um, imagine that uh, in the other side, they have lab, a huge lab, where uh, inventors that worked here on Earth when they were alive, uh, they are there together, such as Thomas Edison, uh, Tesla, Marconi, uh, Dennis Gabor, uh, lots of them are, uh, they join obviously uh, with the intention of bettering the communication with us, right? So they will use their knowledge and obviously they are helped by, or they are supported by higher beings that have more technology than when they were here on earth. Because the technology that is requested for them to make this transmission is absolutely much ahead of the point that we are now. So uh, the humans there are working together with other uh, spirits, uh, other beings, uh, for bettering the transmission, right? And uh, obviously they know that uh, we, in our side, are interested in seeing if our loved ones are well and what happened. That is our focus, obviously, mainly from mothers who lost their kids. Um, not necessarily, it is not the, the, the main focus that the other side has possibly, because I think that they, in truth, wanted to, to send evidence that the afterlife is real and not uh, to care of a particular case of this mother or other mother, but uh, to bring this as a new reality for human beings. So, but they know that they have to test the way that we would like to see, right? So uh, they will work with loved ones. And um, uh, as per what we know, this is not absolutely new. 
because in old, in ancient um, India, uh, they already spoke about the Akashical recordings. So as something that there was already 5,000 years, they already said that everything in universe mm -hmm. is recorded, is printed, let's say, and uh, our memories, we are making our journey, journey and uh, creating um, new images of our each minute. So I have everything that Sonia has done up to here, as well as before, when I was not Sonia, or something else that I, I have no idea what, what it was, but all, all my incarnations would be in my consciousness. That would be the, com the composition of the universe today, each one carrying uh, his or her own experience. So these people from the other side, these spirit friends uh, discovered, let's say, how to get from your memory the scenes of your past. So let's say that if they are looking at me now, they can be they can see Sonia casually, maybe not exactly as we see, maybe something like all oh, frequencies only. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, but also they can um, in, in go inside my my my. Uh, memories and uh, expose and send to us to earth uh, pieces of my memories so that I'll be, uh, we can see Sonia when she was 15 years old and then when she was five years old and that is what they are doing you know this is not only uh, let's say uh, transmitting how the loved one is now if he's well if he's smiling but also making something extra, which is uh, to bring those memories uh, so that it is an evidence for the family because nobody has those images. So are you saying that they have actually sent you images of yourself from the past? Um, yes, I have already saw myself, um, but it is very rare. I usually don't do experiments with myself. Why not? Well, I, I think that, uh, let's say, uh, uh, the time is so so precious and uh, I could be helping some mother instead of, you know. What would be amazing is if they could send you an image of yourself from a previous life. Oh, yeah, that is the point. Mm -hmm. I think that I, I as per the, the experiments, I think that, yes, they are able to do that. But I think that mainly... Uh, people in America is not prepared yet for this topic because this would imply in reincarnation mm -hmm. and this is something delicate. I think that they drop information as we here on earth can absorb it. And by now, for instance, uh, a mother is not interested in what her son was or what he will be. Uh, she wants to see if he's fine, that's all. Yeah. So I think that the, they, the other side goes in parallel to us uh, as we can also uh, grasp what... Absorb it. Mm -hmm. It's okay. From the beginning, you see that uh, the, the vapor is... Uh, this is the ceiling, this white, this clear uh, part here is my ceiling. Mm -hmm. And then you see that the image is forming. And it did, uh, makes also faces, different faces while yeah. recording. That's amazing. How are you getting the different colors in the vapor? Are no, they, that, are, are they, them. are they doing that from the other side? Yeah. Yes. Uh, and this is uh, absolutely impressive because Wesley passed at the age of 13. 13. Yes. And here, he appears younger and older. older. So... Uh, it was amazing for the, his parents. Are you in a dark room? Where is the light source coming from? Are they creating the light source or or what? Yeah, I use uh, all sorts of uh, uh, light. It's um, uh, ultraviolet sometimes, uh, but they have to separate the, the frequencies to create the, to rearrange the, the colors where, uh, let's say, the lips has to be 
there are more rules. Mm -hmm. I understand. I'm just wondering, what are you doing in your house on your end? Like, first of all, what's creating the steam? Are you like boiling a pot of water or using a, a humidifier <laughs> or what's humidifier. going on? So that's yeah. a humidifier and creating steam. And then you have the steam going on and you shine like a flashlight or something. And then they're taking the light and manipulating it into colors for you. Yes. Um... Yeah, also I, everything. Sometimes I, I can color, sometimes I just leave it white. And uh, and, and the other side, it has to manage the things and to, to uh, let's say, to print, if that is the word, to so print over the vapor, the image that they are sending. And uh, this has to be real time, even that we don't see, because we are our mind is incapable to detect the frames. I have to see later, uh, but it has to be some, somehow it has to be in real time, right? So you're saying in real time, when you're looking at the water vapor, you don't even see the images. You have to go back and slow it down frame by frame to see the images. Yes. Okay. I don't see any, I just see the vapor. And uh, sometimes when I'm using, for instance, a cell phone, I can perceive here and there something. But that is too quick. So, but it is recorded, so I can see the the video. So, for example, would you be in your room and say, "Okay, everybody, I'm going to make a recording now. Please show me some images." And then you turn on the machine, and then you hit record, and then you go for a couple minutes, and then you stop and go look at it in the editing, frame by frame. Yeah, more or less like this. I usually record no more than one minute mm -hmm. each time, and then I stop and then record again. Uh, so the files can be short and easier for opening later. And uh, I usually make some 20 uh, takes, let's say. And then I, in the following day, I look one by one and uh, I, care, uh, I, I look for what happened. Uh, not only sometimes uh, the, the trans image of the, that specific loved one, uh, but they can also send different uh, faces uh, with different formats, for instance, uh, some non-humans as well, um, some animals as well. I was just gonna say uh, they send pets a lot too and the people yeah. identify them as their pet with their loved one. What about ETs, like aliens? Are they sending you that? Uh, yeah, in truth, I used it to say that uh, our bosses are not humans. They hmm. cannot be because uh, as I say, the technology that is requested is very far, far in future for us. So imagine, we, imagine one thing: we don't know where they are. All we have are the results. All we have are what they do, but from where? Where they are? Uh, we have no idea how they do it. How they transfer a file to us? Because this is a digital file, right? So it it, it be transferred for from an astral state where and where is it? We have no idea. So uh, all this is a very high technology, and uh, I, I understand that uh, the bosses are not humans. Mm. They are much higher beings, uh, possibly beings, as they say, that. Uh, uh, had been on Earth for some ten thousand years. Some, you know, they are following our civilization, and mainly now, I think that they are somewhat concerned to, with humans, and uh, to where we we may go. So yes, they also appear. Um, we you can see some big heads sometimes. Do you have any pictures of them that you can show us? Yes, I'll have to look at. I'll, I'll have to look it. Okay, okay. that would be great. I found something. All right, great. Uh, it is a video for a coincidence. I think that you uh, would prefer. And uh, let's see if I can share. Okay, uh, let me tell you what I'm I'm doing. Um, this moment, for instance, I wasn't uh, using vapor. It was uh, some time before, and I was uh, uh, with a. Uh, plastic box, transparent, and uh, bubble plastic over. And then you will see inside the box, the head being formed. 
Okay. Hmm. Let me see if I can share. It's almost like you're doing a primitive version of creating a hologram. Yeah, maybe. Uh, can you see it? Yes. Am I, am I sharing? Yes. Yes. Okay. Look, that is the box. That is the bubble plastic. And uh, you see that I'll be moving in front of the camera. Wait. And then inside the box, it starts forming a face. I'm seeing a nose and a mouth, kind of. Well, I, I'm seeing, I oh, know. I think that uh, you, you have to see the whole uh, rectangle, right? Here are the eyes, the yeah. nose and mouth. Right. Do you want me to play again? Sure. Maybe I have to diminish the, the screen. And again, you're not seeing anything when you're recording, right? No, I was just seeing uh, uh, the, the the box that I was carrying. There is nothing inside. Look at the rectangle, yellow. Can you see the face here? Right. Yeah, I can see the nose, the mouth, the head. It almost looks like yeah. a bald, a bald-headed person, perhaps, or some other being. Yeah, but it's exactly. it's somewhat human like. Not exactly. If you look at the detail, you see that the 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 chin is smaller and the head mm -hmm. is a bit bigger. Uh, that is one of our bosses. Okay. His name is Narisha. Narisha, thank you for showing that to us. <laughs> Can you show us some audio recordings? Yes. Usually, I don't use any special device that's not necessary. But we are testing something new, and um, uh, this this uh, test that I'll show you uh, was done by this Brazilian engineer, and he created this device here, um, which has some advantages of uh, very clean voice. Uh, for instance, um, I in this example that uh, we were listening, I I asked Tesla. Oh yes, because Tesla is. Uh, Let's say that possibly the main coordinator, uh, possibly there are higher beings all, uh, over him, but for us, he is uh, the, the coordinator. So I was asking him if I could put some questions and uh, he replies, yes, I can respond. Let's listen. Can I put some questions? Yeah. 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 Is that Tesla's actual voice that we're hearing, or is that like a computer generated response of his voice? Uh, I think that, um, uh, yeah, well, every uh, all contacts, either uh, images or voices, all are uh, come through. Um, uh, huge machines. So yes, uh, all voices are, uh, let's say, generated in a way that they can reach uh, our device. So um, maybe they don't have a voice in the other side, right? But they can still uh, think and uh, pronounce as they use it to, right? So uh, I, I don't think that we have Taylor's, Tesla's mm -hmm. voice. And, uh, but anyway, uh, yes, I think it is generated uh, synthetically. Mm, okay. So do you understand how it is taking some sort of information and creating it into an audio sound? Do you have the technical aspect of that or is that some engineer that, that does that? Look, one thing, we have to note that uh, in these 100 years, that uh, when the, the for, for the first time, Thomas Edison thought of uh, creating a device for communicating with the deceased ones. So it is 100 years. And all this time, never 
we reach the, the other side. That is a very important point. The other side reaches. us. They reach whom they want, as they want. It is their project. It is not ours. So uh, obviously, as the same way that I uh, that I when I notice that something is working better for images, for instance, let's suppose that I uh, tested with uh, infrared, and then I know oh, this is nice. So I go through through that way. The same way with uh, voices. So uh, I've been testing lots of uh, different types of sounds, and uh, how uh, we we achieved these is. Um, the best way for now, uh, because obviously we expect that one day we will be able to speak in, in the bovaya. I mean, I can put the question and understand their replies. By now, all, everything is recorded and I have to, to listen after to see what they replied, right? Mm. So it sounds to me like most of all this work is being done from the other side. Yes. You're really kind of their assistant, helping them. Yeah, that, perfectly. I think that uh, an assistant of a very unimportant uh, level, I mean, uh, uh, because all the technology is from the other side. Uh, nobody on earth ever created any device that from here we could access the other side. And for many reasons, because we don't know their physics. They have a different physics, uh, different from ours. So uh, we don't know how we can reach them. So what we can do is just to open the device for them to send what they think that is we are in condition to understand and to receive because it would be useless. Uh, for instance, uh, today, let's say that something, uh, a great advancement happened and uh, instead of sending images, many like 3D already, but uh, they could send an holography. And then this could make such a confusion here on earth. And, uh, you know, I think that it would be, that, that's not time yet. We, we, we have, they know that they have to, to, to develop it as our possibilities, right? Hmm. All right, let's hear some more. Okay. Uh, in this other example, I asked the Tesla if he, he would work with Thomas Edison because obviously everybody knows that they had uh, a disagreement yes. with, uh, when both were alive. And uh, he replied, he's my brother. Let's listen. Will you, Thomas Edison, work with our team? He's my brother. He's my brother. He's my brother. I think that uh, they don't uh, have problems anymore. Uh, this is uh, a son of a, a mom that uh, lost Cameron. Um, and uh, he says, before I, I greet him, before I say hi, Cameron, he says, this is one of the greatest events. Let's listen. This is one of the greatest events. Hi, Cameron. This is one of the greatest events. Hi, Cameron. Mm -hmm. This is one of the greatest events. Hi, Cameron. Now, did you play this to his mother or father and they were able to verify that that was his voice? Yes. That's not his voice. That's not his voice. Oh, though. that's right. That's a com it's a computer. But we used a voice. voice. We we used gibberish voice though, didn't we? That was like young man, twenty something. I think. Yeah. Uh, still, what is interesting is that many times they give it, uh, information that obviously only the parents know, and perhaps Lisa could tell that case of uh, when her her daughter Amber uh, sent a message talking about Sunday. Could you tell us? Talking about what? Which one was it? They, uh, that you meet on Sundays. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She was talking about um, how with her father meeting on Sundays. And at first we couldn't make any sense of it. But then we, she was joining us on Sundays. We were doing, we've been doing ever since COVID started, um, a spiritual event online 
and she was making reference that she does that with us. Hmm. And, and there's other things too. I mean, I have asked, you know, I've asked her, you've done this, you've smiled. Maybe next time you could wink for me or, or, and, and she didn't actually wink, but she actually came in in the video blinking her eyes, which was startling because, you know, it had been a, almost a decade since I've seen her blink her eyes. And I know exactly that it was her. 100%. Wow. Okay. I think this is the last example of a voice. This is a communication of uh, Luis, uh, this boy there. In the last years of your life, we're going to have these incredible experiences. In the last years of your life, we're going to have these incredible experiences. In the last years of your life, we're going to have these incredible experiences. Okay. So uh, I think that these are some audio examples. I think they're amazing. If anyone claims that these images are just copies or photoshopped, how would you respond to that? Well, I think that uh, I would laugh first. And uh, I would say that uh, there are basically two reasons for someone to fake. Either for money, which is absolutely not my case. And uh, I offer fame, which is absolutely not my case as well. Because I have to, to, to work, I don't have time to keep appearing in many places. And, um, but mainly, I think that, uh, um, I think that uh, it is my responsibility. It is my spiritual ca ca career. And I think that if you deal with the, 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 the spiritual friends as I do for 40 years, you wouldn't be courageous enough to not to be real with them, to be truth. Because it is, uh, it, it's my chance, it's my opportunity of using well my life. So I think that the, by the opposite, I am very thankful for them for giving me this opportunity of helping people. And obviously, this res research is not mine. And obviously, it will grow and better and better in the next years. So uh, I know that it's just a seed by now. It is nothing important uh, uh, by by now, but I think that in future, in some years, possibly we will have a, a full conversation uh, uh, in any family, in any house. We will have an ordinary device that you talk to your grandma, uh, did you arrive well, and things like that. But I think that first of all, mankind needs to deserve it, which is not the case by now. So they have to hold till we are more mature to receive all this responsibility. How often are you recording these images and sounds? Yeah, uh, in truth, as Lisa mentioned, uh, it takes a lot of time after recording. The problem is not to record, it's the work that comes later. And um, uh, so I usually uh, ask Lisa, to invite uh, a, a certain group, for instance, of uh, suicides, uh, people who died of cancer, uh, old age people, uh, unborn people. So these are groups of similar cases. And then I start recording one by one. And usually I everything is published. I make some e-magazines, which is nearly distributed for free uh, for help, helping people. and. Uh, uh, intrusive, uh, they, uh, oh, I got, I'm sorry, I got lost. It's all right. I was just asking about your work and how often you did it. Oh, sorry. Oh yeah. Sometimes I make so many turns that I get lost. Um, so, uh, every time I record for one mother, for instance, or for someone who lost someone, and then it will take me some 10 days. So I put everything in a in magazine format, and then my volunteers, my helpers will make the translations and everything to post it. So I just make the records and see everything, the results, and then I move on. But uh, usually, um, each 10 days, more or less, I can record. Working Sunday from Sunday, eh? no, I, I don't stop. Uh, but it is a lot of work because they send it 
too many images and I, I have to observe what they are sending for commenting the uh, scientific aspect also. So it is a lot of work. Are you posting these images and recordings on your website or a YouTube channel? In YouTube channel, there are things, uh, there are interviews. Uh, Lisa Cares of a uh, Facebook of mine, uh, which is international, but we have another Facebook here in Brazil. And we have Instagram where we, we some, uh, publish something as well. But well, what are, uh, we made for helping uh, me with the expenses and to help my volunteers is that uh, we created a website from Patreon. And uh, people usually uh, pay $5 per month and we'll receive four in magazines with videos, audios, uh, audio, uh, audios and uh, images, everything. One holy magazine with usually 50 or 60 pages. So it is a lot of work. And for a magazine is for $5. So I feel that I'm not uh, charging anything. And uh, I think that that is the way I have to work. That sounds reasonable to me. Now, there was a, a documentary or something made about your work as well? Yeah, uh, it was made in the U.S., and uh, I think that uh, um, I think you have the the link for the trailer. Yes, I will put it in the description below. If someone else wants to get involved in the research and do what you're doing, can they do that? Yes, of course they can. Uh, the, the only point is if the other side will do the same thing, because I think that it depends not on, on, on the wish of the person, but mainly uh, of the dedication, determination, um, how how we will, why we will do the recordings, and all this is considered by the other side. And uh, if you have pure intentions, if you want to help people, obviously they will help you, and they will send images. Uh, then uh, people usually makes what I do, and it works. But I, I think that uh, this is something that you have to conquest uh, the, the friendship, the, the loyalty to, from the other side. So how long were you practicing before you got, <laughs> yeah. you got any results? Yeah, it was three years without anything. And then it started with horrible voices, I would say today, 40 years ago. But uh, yeah, it was, uh, I think they were testing me and I survived, right? I guess what you're saying is it's up to the people on the other side whether or not they will want to work with you. Yeah, perfectly. It is their project. Uh, this is, let's say, I, I, I think, something extremely important for humanity in many years will be. So they have to be very careful. These cannot fall in um, wrong hands because this could be also used for bad reasons, as always, as for military uses, for instance. And they will not allow that because I think that what is in the game is uh, humans' uh, evolution. So they are very careful uh, with whom they work. But obviously, they need uh, people in our side for testing and uh, uh, bettering the results. Do you think the people on the other side are right here with us, but just in a different frequency, like literally right next to us? I think it's a curious answer, a curious answer because it would be yes and no. Uh, yes, in our case, because I think that uh, as per the technology that they use presently, they um, they have to be inside our in 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 our room, let's say. So yes, we are together. They I or better in truth, I am. We are there in the other side. So yes, we are together. Uh, so the first reply would be yes, but it is also no because in truth that they are uh, dealing with a cop of ours is a uh, virtual reality and not a, uh, uh, so they are not here, let's say, in a physically 
parallel world. No, they, 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 they are, um, let's say, they are too high level to be close to Earth. For them, uh, Earth is very polluted, let's say. Uh, so it is easier for them to work with a couple of us there. So, yes, we are together, but at the same time, no, uh, they are not here. Why do you think they are wanting to have communication with us? Like, what's the point of all this? For them, I think that uh, as uh, I am in touch with uh, some uh, pioneers of uh, instrumental transcommunication, uh, I like Dr. Konstantin Raudev uh, mainly. Uh, I see that the objective that they have is to to bring slowly a help to Earth because if something ha happens here. And then happily, we know that this may happen at any moment because uh, man is uh, unpredictable and we can have a war, for instance, um, that's not impossible. And uh, I think that the care of being prepared for uh, a later communication uh, when this will be possible because maybe Earth will be cleaner than it is now. So. I think that the objective that they have is to bring the information that the afterlife is real. And uh, this is not a small thing. This is something that can change humanity, can change completely um, the reason why you are here, what you're doing and what you have to do and why, uh, and how you, you have to face your own life. So. Uh, I think that is uh, more responsibility to human beings. And I think that is what what they, they want. Well, after watching this podcast, people may want to get in touch with you and ask you questions. Are you open to that? And if so, how do they contact you? Oh, I think that that is Lisa's part. <laughs> uh, yeah. she, she is a, a, an incredible volunteer and friend. And she helps me a lot because either I keep replying to people or I make the, the research and she follows everything. So she knows everything she she can reply. Maybe she can say uh, if people wanted to make any question how people could do. Yeah, I mean, I send a lot of emails, so it's usually not a problem. And, and a lot of things I have to forward to Sonia, but um, generic kind of questions, I'm able to answer them. And I can just give you my email if you want. Sure. Okay. It's so it's my last name, L A N I E W S K I, the number four at hotmail.com. And I would just appreciate if people would put Sonia Rinaldi in the um, subject line just so that I can uh, be able to discriminate between something that's for me and something that's really important that I need to get to. My guess. And if people want more than to make a question or, and uh, want to help you with $5, I think that it would be helpful because uh, I, I'm exchanging information. I'm not receiving things. So I, the $5 is not free. Uh, it will be, uh, there will be a retribution for the, the, the help, right? And that's how I receive, I receive emails a lot where people are asking for Sonia to work with them. And, um, Pretty much since the start of COVID, uh, she just hasn't really been working individually with people so much anymore. Also, that was a, you know, she was trying to figure out ways to work with, to, to try to get the information out there to help more than one person at a time. And that's how we came up with the idea of Patreon, because, you know, I would have to wait until a whole bunch of people wrote in and said, oh, you know, I have a child, five years old. Well, I'm going to try to get a bunch of five-year-old children. Now I just publish something to Patreon and I'll say, we're, we're looking right now to find out anybody who lost a loved one, a very significant person around the holidays. Let us know if that's you. And because then that way we can get 10, 12 people at a time and do a project. So you can do a lot of recording, you know, and then take all the time to go back and look. So the Patreon, it's not just a money-making venture. It's also a way of us having a pool of people um, and there's always people that are joining and then there's always people that are leaving also. 
Um, you know, we ask people to, if they can, to supply us with $5 a month. And for that, they, I send something every single Friday. And that's usually a report, but sometimes it'll be a copy of this interview or it'll be a, um, a presentation that Sonia did for a different group. But they get something every single week. And they also get the opportunity then to, um, to record with Sonia, which is great. A lot of our Patreons have already recorded. My guess is that you initially contacted Sonia to, to contact your daughter on the other side? Um, actually, years ago, um, Sonia was doing a presentation out when AREI, the Afterlife Research and Education Institute, with uh, Suzanne Wilson and Craig Hogan, when they were doing in-person events out in Arizona. And Sonia was coming to present there, and Craig was looking for um, attendees who'd lost a child um, who'd be willing to work with Sonia so that she could actually work with Americans who were in the room as opposed to just bringing her research from Brazil. That And, and so that was people who had skin in the game. And I was one of those people back in, I don't know, Susan, was it 2017? It's about more yeah. than that. Yeah. So when, oh, wow. So how did you react when she made contact? What was it like for you? Oh, I was, I really was very, very surprised. I wasn't, I wasn't skeptical at all. I mean, I know a lot of people are skeptical, but I, I mean, as a mom, you know, you know, your child's facial expressions, you know, and, and I know that when she received some audios from my daughter, there was always a little cryptic message in there that immediately, like the one time she was, she got a message on my anniversary and my daughter was saying party in the woods party in the woods. Well, it was my anniversary and I had been married at the Woodlands. And so it was, you know, it didn't mean anything to her. She was like, can you hear as clear as day your daughter saying party in the woods? It's December. Like, what are you doing out in the woods? But it was very, very relevant to me. And, I, and a lot of parents will say things like that, that the message, it might be really short, but it's, it's very relevant. So if someone wants to join your Patreon, why would they want to look at people that they don't even know? Well, uh, first of all, I think that uh, the, the, the important lesson is not the, the, the trans images themselves, but to, to note that uh, it is a reality and why it is real, because we don't have technology for doing those things. So it has to be, to be coming from somewhere. So it is a proof of uh, a contact with another realm and uh, uh, this is maybe maybe the important point. But uh, not only we record for uh, each mother that is in the, the making part of the group that uh, in that moment, but the other side also sends lots of unknown images. That is, let's, let's suppose I'm working for Lisa and uh, we are having Amber in many scenes of her past and everything that later she will get from her photos and send to me and so. But also there uh, may appear uh, Lisa's father or um, unknowns that we have no idea who they are. So what we do is to collect all these images of unknowns and we publish it in a catalog also, besides being in each magazine, then we get, get them together uh, so that m anyone can have a look and see if you find anyone that uh, the person knows. And many, many times, um, uh, many people recognize this, uh, the son, the daughter, the father, anything. And uh, then they send to us the photo and say, oh, this is in the unknown catalog number 25. Okay, then we make the comparison and then we publish too. So that we try to keep people very well informed of everything that's going on. Do you think in some way, either the people at the transmission station or beings on the other side are somehow guiding their family members to yes. find your catalog? Ah, uh, yes, possibly. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, Lisa may say that. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I tell this to people all the time. When you set the intention that this is what I want to do, I, I'm ready to see you and I want you to come through. How many times people will say, I've asked my loved one to come through with Sonia two years ago 
And, you know, there it is, clear as day. So I definitely think, you know, all the little synchronicities that happen in our lives that are orchestrated by our loved ones on the other side, this is just another, they're led, they're led to Sonia. Or uh, very often, somebody will write and say, I had a mediumship reading with so-and-so, and they told me that I need to find this woman in Brazil. Blah, blah, blah. You know, and they did, they give her name and they're like, I don't know what it is. What does she do? And then I explain everything. And if they decide to join with us more times than not, they're just like blown away because they can't believe that they, that their, their loved one appeared when a woman was being filmed. And, you know, it, maybe it was their son that came in or a, I mean, we've had, you know, all different races come in when one person is being filmed that's of completely different sex, a different race. Um, it's it's really, it's shocking. It's absolutely shocking. And to, to have them write back to you and say, oh, something so very specific. Wasn't there something with somebody with a, a monkey on his shoulder or a bird or something? And then the the husband or wife or somebody came back and said, that was my, oh, I think it was a son. My son was a bird lover, always had a bird, a pet bird from birth and had never told us that before, but there's, you know, the bird sitting there. It was just so bizarre. Let's say if someone comes to you and says, I want you to help me find my husband. And what if that husband has already reincarnated? Will they still send at least pictures of them from the transmission station, but you really can't get an audio recording, at least of any new fresh questions because they've already come back? Well, this never happened uh, mainly because uh, the person who looks for us is someone who lost someone um, about three years, five years, not more than 10 years usually. Uh, so possibly the, the person is still on the other side. So this never happened, but it could happen. And I think that they wouldn't uh, have the a way to 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 show the person if it, the person is not in the other side. How long do you think a person stays on the other side before reincarnating? Oh, it depends on uh, each one's development. For instance, um, uh, I'm a widow, right? My husband passed, um, and uh, about one week later, he was already communicating. But he was, uh, you know, very aware of what I did. If he, trusted in afterlife, everything, all, all this. Uh, so I think that uh, um, the, 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 the great dream is not to incarnate anymore, right? right. Uh, it's to work in the other side. That At least is what I want. But uh, obviously, I don't know. Maybe they ask me to, to come back for any other task. And obviously, I will. Um, but I think that it depends in each case because you may make the option of uh, staying the other side to work and to do good or to come to work and help your family. So there are so many things. It depends on your level of your, how, how clear you are about your lives and uh, what you have to, the direction you have to go to. Ladies, you have given us fascinating information today. And before you both go, can you leave us with a positive message? I think that uh, the good news is that uh, the afterlife is real. It's not a, a good a good or positive message for some. Uh, but uh, in truth, it is our journey. And I think that uh, um, whenever people uh, want to to be sure about that this is a life changing and uh, i think that it is it helps in your conduction of your own life if you know that after life is real so i think that hope i hope that uh, our audience uh, goes through this way would you like to add anything lisa oh, i i think that one of the things that's just so healing for so many people especially a parent who's lost a child to suicide or Who's, who's had to watch as a child just diminished from cancer or spouse, to see them on the other side renewed and healthy and smiling and everything, every message that they come through with is positive. Um, it's just, it, you know, it just does your heart so good knowing that everyone that we love, when we get to the other side, we are 
we're fine. Everything that we that was wrong with us physically, mentally, emotionally. Once we heal, we heal and we're fine. Very healing. Lisa and Sonia, thank you for your messages and thank you for being my guest. My pleasure. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you so much. And anybody who's interested in Patreon, please check us out. We are always looking for new friends there. Thanks for watching the Jeff Mara podcast. I really appreciate you. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. And if you do, there are loyalty badges and other perks depending on your level of membership. All you need to do is click the join button underneath the video to find out more. Thank you for your support.